jungle enemy, the Jap. But there's another enemy that you'll come up against, an enemy that lurks within your own lines and destroys vital communications equipment. This is a menace that may be found in any damp area, but ordinarily it's bred from tropical climates, humidity, salt water, changing temperatures. Fungi and corrosion are the results. Here's what fungus looks like. These bits of wire are covered with this microscopic plant life. It can feed on any organic material, leather, wood, insulation, rubber. And here's a piece of fungus-infested webbing. This parasite lives on any dirty surface, and the fluid it secretes will even attack glass and metal. Moisture causes corrosion and insulation breakdown. That's corrosion on the back of that tuning capacitor, on that dynamotor base, and around that crystal panel. In the short period of a single day, fungus and moisture can cause shorts, grounds, paths of leakage, flashovers, and crosstalk. So this is serious. Take a look at some equipment brought back from the tropics. This test meter went bad because of fungus growth on the wiring, battery, and coils. Here's another victim, a telephone switchboard, BD-71. Notice how fungus has attacked the wiring system of this unit. This double E8A had a short life for the same reason, fungus on the coils and wiring. It works on the case as well. Fungus like this causes the leather to get brittle and crack and will eventually cause it to decompose completely. Here's another unit that should still be sending important messages. Instead, it sits here useless as an example of what moisture and fungus can do. There are no exceptions. Fungus and moisture work on anything. Corrosion caused by the action of moisture ruined this dynamotor, caused this relay to stick and burn out. This will give you an idea of the damage fungus can do. These checks make it pretty obvious that the insulation resistance on this remote control unit isn't very effective after fungus has lived on it a while. In fact, some of the circuits are almost completely shorted. But this is a menace that can be beaten, beaten by knowledge. Technical Bulletin TB SIG 13 gives you general instructions for moisture and fungi proofing any piece of signal equipment. Other technical bulletins giving details for treating individual units are also available. Here's what the job is done with. This kit includes two cans of fungicide lacquer, one can of thinner, masking tape, spray gun, brushes and drying equipment. Here's how the job's done. First of all, it's important to test to see that the unit is in good working condition. This includes alignment and replacing defective parts. Next, the unit has to be stripped so you can mask, dry, and spray it later on. Cleaning is very important. All dust, dirt, oil, corrosion, and fungus must be removed before the lacquer application. Then comes masking. All electrical contacts are covered to protect them from the lacquer. Rubber gaskets that can't be removed must also be covered. Then drying. This is done at not more than 160 degrees Fahrenheit for about three hours to remove moisture and kill fungus. Next, the lacquer application in the spraying room. Finally, the unit is reassembled and then test it again to see if the treatment has affected operation. A processing job can be done practically anywhere. Here's a repair truck that's been outfitted to do the job. This six-man moisture and fungi proofing team includes radio and wire men and an officer. Here's what it looks like inside. Notice how the infrared lamps furnished with the kit have been set up to do a drying job. But most of the time, you'll have to take care of your own equipment. Let's take a look at a typical setup for processing. No cigarettes around here, though, or you may get some unexpected fireworks. 
These men are about to process their SCR 610. Let's see how it's done. But first, let's see where fungus and moisture usually attack this set. Battery plugs and straps, wiring and metal parts, jacks and meter glass, condenser, chassis and tubes, and case. Here's how you can prevent this. The first thing to do in processing a set is to check operation. This includes replacing defective parts and aligning the set. Don't forget this first step. Later on, you'll be checking again to see if the treatment had any effect on alignment. This set checks up OK, so let's go on. Next, the set has to be stripped so that all parts can be masked, dried, and sprayed. Unsolder wires only when it's absolutely necessary. This is a good time to clean out the set. This one's easy. On some sets, you'll have to use sandpaper to remove corrosion. Use the brush that comes with the kit for dusting and get in and around all those tubes and coils. Then make sure you get the dust and dirt off of all the wiring. It's important to have a clean surface. Lacquer applied to a dirty surface will crack and peel off. Don't forget, always remove batteries. Otherwise, the heat used in drying will damage them. Fungus likes webbing. Remember that infested piece you saw? So make sure you clean off all webbing. You'll have to take off the protective shielding on the power supply to get to the inside when you spray later on. And then, of course, clean it out. It's a good idea to put the set on boards like this. It makes it easier to handle and helps keep the parts separated. Then remove all coil shielding and any other shielding covering parts that may be affected by fungus and moisture. It's important to get the spray on every one of these coils. And don't overlook the speaker. That's one of the worst moisture traps in the set. A terminal strip is a good hiding place for fungus. There's only one way to make sure you get the lacquer on this part. Loosen it and then pull it out so you'll be able to get the spray on both sides. Now you're ready to start masking. Masking is a simple and common sense affair, a protection for contact points. First, mask all the trimmer adjustment screws. If these get a dose of lacquer, they may stick and break the next time they're adjusted. Here it is, all masked. Notice how paper has been molded to cover the trimmer capacitors and gang switches. Take a good look at the parts mask. Adapter socket and crystal socket, discriminator coil capacitor, and of course the trimmer adjustment. Then be sure to tighten the terminal nuts. If you overlook this, lacquer will get under them and insulate your connection. Finally, it's important to mask the fuse clip on the power supply and the end of all battery plugs. The set is ready to go to the oven for drying. This is one type of oven that can be set up with the infrared lights that come with the kit. Any steel chest, empty drum, or packing case will make a good oven. Put the control thermostat near the center of the equipment. This maintains a 160 degree temperature. Remember the thermometer so you'll be able to check the temperature. It's important to keep the oven at 160 degrees Fahrenheit. At temperatures above this point, and sometimes even at 160 degrees, the heat may cause the waxes and the insulating compounds to melt. So always keep an eye on the equipment. And if it's necessary to lower the temperature, Add one hour for each 10 degree decrease. But ordinarily, you'll be setting the time for three hours. Then every so often, you should check the temperature to make sure it doesn't go above 160 degrees.
While the set is drying, you'll have plenty of time to mix the lacquer. Two parts lacquer and one part thinner will give the fluid a good consistency for spraying. Later on, when you're touching up with the brush, you'll be able to use the lacquer straight without thinner. This lacquer has a toxic effect, so make sure you're wearing a respirator whenever you're working in the spray room. If you can get hold of a ventilating fan, it will help clear out a lot of the fumes. You've already been warned about cigarettes. Always keep in mind that this lacquer is highly explosive, and any open flame around the spray room can cause a lot of damage to you as well as to the equipment. When your set has been in the oven for about three hours, it's ready to go to the spray room. Spraying should always be done inside a building, tent, or covered van. The main thing is to find some place where moisture and dust won't accumulate and get on the equipment. To keep the set from reabsorbing any moisture, it's given the first coat of lacquer while it's still warm. When you use a handgun like this, you must give the set three coats. Wait about 15 or 20 minutes between each coat for drying. Spray from as many angles as possible to make sure you get the lacquer on all the parts. Notice that the tubes are left in while the set is sprayed. That's done so you don't have to bother masking the socket openings. When you use a power gun, Two coats will usually do the job. Make sure you get a good dose on the webbing. After the last coat of lacquer has dried, the masking can be taken off. Take it easy when you do this or you may pull some of the wiring loose and damage the set. Take a brush and touch up any vulnerable parts that were covered by the masking, such as the ends of capacitors and resistors. You may have missed the edge of the Bakelite strip when you spray it. So touch it up. And don't forget that speaker cone. Stamp the set to show it has been processed. MFP, moisture fungi proofed, and the date. Those middle letters indicate the unit that did the processing. Now the set can be reassembled. When it's all back together, it's tested again to make sure the processing hasn't affected alignment and operation. You've seen one way a processing job can be done. If there are several units to be treated, it's a good idea to set up an assembly line. Here, each man has a certain job to do in preparing the set for treatment. Some are testing, others are stripping, cleaning, and masking. This line is working on wire equipment. There's a WE8A all ready for the oven. A WE65 about ready to go. A BD71 and a TG5. A switchboard like this doesn't go through a regular routine treatment. Since there are so many connections that have to be masked, it's much easier to leave the set assembled and apply the lacquer with a brush to the parts likely to be attacked by fungus and moisture. Here's the radio processing line in action. There goes one to the oven now. Let's see what sets they're working on. There's the BC-312 getting a masking job. Whatever set you're working on, it's important to mask all contact points like this. 
There's the SCR-536 ready for treatment. The BC-683 and the I-56 test set. So, this is the difference. Untreated wires, treated wires. Webbing covered with fungus, webbing that's been processed. A neglected set damaged by fungus and moisture. A set that was cared for before it saw action. A corroded base and a processed base. Take your choice. The life and performance of your Signal Corps equipment depends on the protection you give it. Give it protection from fungus and moisture, and you'll be giving it a chance to do a job for you.